I've been working in the field of cell and gene therapy for almost three decades, and this is the most thrilling period of my entire career. When it comes to medical trailblazers, Australia punches above its weight. I think a lot of the future of surgery in particular will be robotic. Yeah, I'm absolutely excited about it. What would have seemed a pipe dream 50 years ago is now a reality. The future is all about using frontier technology to create individual solutions to disease. What we're moving towards is loosely referred to as personalised medicine, where instead of having one-size-fits-all treatments for a particular disease, we actually look at the individual more intensively than we've previously done to decide how best to treat any particular problem as it arises. Nine. Nine spots. One, two, three, four. Advances in genetic testing have transformed the lives of 16-year-old Hayden Smith and his 12-year-old brother, Tyler. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's all right. Oh, Such a relief mm. to get finally get a diagnosis after all these years of the unknown and being on a knife's edge. For most of their lives, the boys have been in and out of hospital with multiple serious conditions, including perforated bowels, inflamed joints and chronic eczema. We got sent to different specialists, but everything came back quite normal. Um, so there was never... It was just always treating the symptoms and not knowing what was underlying. Doctors were confounded but suspected a genetic cause. Until recently, there was no way of finding out. It's only when we had the availability of genetic testing um, where, uh, rather than looking for, for a specific gene, which we weren't sure what that was, um, we went on a fishing expedition, I suppose, um, and that uh, testing came up with this answer. That complex test looked at thousands of genes and took months to complete, but it solved the puzzle. What was the diagnosis? It was called IPEC syndrome, which is very, very rare, and I think this was the only um, case in Australia. Once doctors discovered the boys had IPEC syndrome, an inherited condition, they knew how to treat it. Tyler, then Hayden, had bone marrow transplants. I can't even explain, like Tyler is a new boy. He has got so much energy now. He can play, he's just, even his personality's changed, hasn't it? What we have been able to do with these um, boys uh, is tailor their treatment according to what we've been able to find from their um, evaluation of their genomic uh, material. And it's life changing for the families where we've been able to achieve this. This adds a whole new dimension to our toolkit of treatments for cancer. Haematologist Professor John Rasco at Sydney's Royal Prince Alfred Hospital has gone one step further and is not only identifying genes, but harnessing them to treat patients. For the first time in the history of cancer medicine, we've been able to reprogram patients' own cells so that they target their own body's cancer. Australia has now approved cell and gene therapy for patients with cancer, leukaemia, and in particular, lymphoma. We're working on a robotic system at the moment that is personalised for a particular patient. Researchers at the Australian Centre for Robotic Vision are creating a personalised robot. We're not aware of anyone using robots to do minimally invasive surgery inside joints at all, including the knee. And we're developing robot systems that can go around corners because currently surgeons use straight tools and straight camera systems. This robot is designed to help surgeons perform arthroscopies on knees. We need some geometry of the patient's knee, so you can see here a scan being done. On... After scanning the patient, a computer generates the ideal tool to match the exact needs of that knee. And then we take the models that this generates and we go and 3D print them. Ultimately, this snake robot will go into the patient's knee uh, and then explore the different areas of the knee, helping the surgeon. We're using knee surgery, but we think this is much bigger than knee surgery. 
we expect we'll be able to put this into a shoulder, into a hip, into the abdomen, so this could have neurosurgical implications and we could get deep inside the brain quite safely without having to do big exposure. We have to drive health innovation. We can't solve every problem, absolutely not. But we have to contribute some solutions. We have to be players in the game. And the laser has an evacuation, a smoke evacuator, and that goes into the tube. Perth-based burn specialist Professor Fiona Wood, who famously developed spray on skin, says personalised medicine will transform complex burn surgery. The gas went through and all the particles stuck to the outside. Can we use an intelligent knife, an eye knife, which analyzes real-time chemistry in the gas that's coming off the laser as you're cutting through the tissue to tell you whether the tissue is dead or alive and whether it's bacterially contaminated, real-time. That is so exciting. But what about printing skin, three-dimensional printing skin with bioink cells and the delivery point of care in that acute setting on that person appropriate for that body site. Now, then I wake up. But really, we're starting now to put down the foundations of that. And even though it may not happen in my surgical lifetime, it will happen. Innovation comes at a high price. Developing the genome sequencing test that unlocked the mystery of Hayden and Tyler's condition took decades and cost billions. I was just worried about them all the time, but now to know that their future looks so bright and hopefully they can just live normal lives. At the moment, the price of these technologies is astoundingly high. However, uh, as the technology develops and as competition enters the market, we anticipate that those prices will drop. But they are changing lives and offering hope to individuals who have previously lacked hope. Successive governments in Australia have been very generous in supporting health and medical research. We don't do so well from philanthropy in this country and we don't do as well from industry either. But for Australians to benefit the most from these medical discoveries, they need to happen here. Unless we actually step up and challenge the paradigm and drive forward new novel solutions, we will be passive recipients of technologies from the rest of the world and therefore vulnerable. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.